Um, Anson Williams, by the way, has done a lot more than just Happy Days. He is an award-winning television director, writer, and producer, and entrepreneur. He has directed more than 300 hours of television, and he's written a new book. It's called Singing to a Bulldog, from Happy Days to Hollywood Director and the Unlikely Mentor Who Got Me There. Anson, nice to have you back nice, on Good Day, New nice York. Nice to be here, thanks. Now, so, do people still call you Potsy, and does it bother you? You know, no, I mean it's it's you know it's it's actually you know kind of nice. I mean it, people say it with a smile, and, and if it makes you feel you know good, great. Because you look the same. But you know it was interesting though. Um, Ron Howard told me years ago, you know I was complaining a little bit about Potsy, and he said, "What are you complaining about? I got Richie, I got I got Richie and Opie." And Opie, right? You know, exactly. and he said, "You got." He, he says, "You have to earn your name." Well, Potsy. So we what, did. What was Potsy? What was? Oh, where, where, where did the name come yeah. from? Yeah. Gary Marshall's wife had a friend in high school that was nicknamed that, and he thought it was good. It was a good name, Potsy. <laughs> and you know, he likes IEs. Yeah. Richie, Potsy, Fonzie, Ralphie. <laughs> and meanwhile, it was Gary Marshall who told you to actually go sing to a bulldog, right? Well, what happened was, like my book, Singing to a Bulldog, it's actually uh, in honor of my mentor, who was, uh, okay, okay. I was 15 years old, uh, broken kind of kid. I got an assistant janitorial job at a department store. My boss was an Afro-American man by the name of Willie Turner, who was illiterate and an alcoholic in his 50s. And he, when he talked, he would say, he would talk like, damn and does, you listen, boy. Boys, you sit here, boy. How, and, but that's the way he talked. But you know, that man called his talk room and called the janitorial room the talk room. And he had two oil drum cans, and he would sit me there, this 15, sit me down there, this 15-year-old kid, and he helped me find me. In those two years, Willie Turner found me. There would be no stories about Willie Turner. His lessons are so powerful. You never know in life where you're going to get your answers from. You never know in life, you know, who's going to have that magic. You said, you said that you had a difficult childhood, and somehow this guy broke through to you. He broke through to me because, I mean, he had a more difficult childhood. He found me. He gave me the confidence to move forward. He said, you, you don't look at the mountain, boy. You climbs the mountain. You climbs the mountain. He found, he found my performing abilities. He found my marketing abilities. He gave me, I, I walked out of there at 17, a new guy, and, I'm, and I was moving up that mountain. If it wasn't for Willie Turner, there would be no story. So the book is actually Lesson 1, Lesson 2, Lesson 3, uh, with good stories, fun stories, that are, but there's a bigger story to it, because I wanted everyone who reads that book to have, be in that talk room with Willie Turner. He has powerful lessons for everybody. The talk room, by the way, uh, that was the janitorial closet. Yeah. After school, during school, after before? School. After it was, school. It was, yeah, it was like a part-time job, because we weren't very rich at all. We, had, we didn't have a lot of money. Where'd you grow up? Burbank, California. And GI Bill, you know, three-bedroom house, one bathroom. Anything extra in life, you paid for. You worked for it. Mm. And, uh, you know, and, and you know, we all meet, meet famous people. We meet all these powerful people. And as you get older, you, you realize, well, who really are the people that really helped you? And here's this, the, here's this janitor that made my life happen. So, so it basically, the underlying theme of this book, never judge. Ever judge where you're going to get that magic. Where are you going to get the tools to, to turn your life around? Well, it is very inspirational. At the same time, there's some great stories in there. Yeah, there about are. Some of the people that you met along the way in, in, on your show. Yeah. John oh, Lennon. I'm, well, John Lennon, surprised this is on the set, spent the whole day. He's doing caricatures for everybody, you know. Not us. We're professionals. Oh no, no. You never no, asked no, him no, for Grips, a character. Grips bought a house with their with their original drawings. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. When your show came out, I mean, it was bigger than like Homeland and Modern Family put together. I mean, people oh. watched like all across the country. Sixty everybody million stopped. a week. It was wild. By the way, y'all look like you're great friends uh, yes. on the set. Yes. And, uh, Please tell me that's true offset. Was there any kind of nasty drama behind the scenes? No, there really, there wasn't. We're I, still, I, friends, yeah, we're I, still I, friends to this day. Awesome. I mean, I see Henry, Ron's back east, but we talk all, you know, what all the time. What about Ralph Mouth? He's one of my best friends. Donnie Most? Donnie Most lives 10 minutes <laughs> from me. By the way, Don Most, fantastic big band singer. He was just over at uh, 54 Below. Oh, we had yeah, a picture of Donnie so nice. and uh, Donnie. The redhead. Yeah, Donnie is one fantastic big band singer. All right, so but singing to a bulldog, singing to a bulldog. was something that Gary Marshall said to you. Well, you're right. Willie Turner, years before in that talk room, said, I won't get into the story of why, but I, he said, you got marketing abilities. You know how to sell, boy. You be careful with that. That's a powerful tool. So here we are in Happy Days. and. Um, you don't make the money like you made today. And I'm looking at the Partridge family, they're singing. I'm looking at the Brady Bunch, they're singing. They're gigging. I go, I sing? Why not have a band on the show? So I see Gary, and he goes, he goes I don't have time to talk. No, no, Gary, I, walk with me. 
So I did the elevator pitch. You have girls, you got girls, you got you got cars, need a band. And you did the theme. Weren't you doing the theme of Happy Days? At least you were you were lip syncing. That I didn't the, do. You were I didn't do the theme. But I but I sang on the show like many, many times. But anyway, so he get, so I convinced him, he gave me a shot, we put the band together, but he said, Are you good? Nah, it doesn't matter if you're good. You're singing to a bulldog. If you're good you get laughs, if you're bad you get laughs. I love it. We actually have a clip of the show. Oh, okay. Well, she touched my hand, and what a chill I got. Her lips are like a volcano that's hot. I'm proud to say she's my buttercup. I'm in love. I'm all shook up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hey, hey. Ooh, You're right, you got what laughs. Yeah, I did. And you got a very nice voice. And what is this beefcake going to do? Is he going to punch you out? He doesn't like it. Yeah, he did not like it. There are always some guys from out of town, from one town over. In that, but, but see, and the reason singing for Bulldog, okay, okay. that song got me a record contract, it got me booked around the country, and it opened up the world for me, that music, way more than the show. So singing to Bulldog, it's kind of like this, Jump the Shark is a precise moment when success starts to decline. Singing to Bulldog is the precise moment when you start to climb. We like that. By the way, Jump the Shark, if you've heard that phrase, it comes from Happy Days when for whatever reason, they went to Hollywood and what's his name, Fonzie, jumped sharks yeah. at water skiing. Yes. Which is a ludicrous kind of concept. But that's what he could do. They go, Henry, <laughs> what can you, I can water ski. You did, by the way, I remember you lip syncing, or at least singing, it seemed like you were singing the opening of the show in later seasons. Right. What? Well, you now, the, are one, you touchy about that? What? No, I'm not touchy. I sang on the show. That's the one thing. They, they, it they wasn't were, your real voice. No, they were cheap. They said, just mouth this quickly <laughs> for, for an opening credit. I uh, love it. Well, the know? book is out today. It's called Singing to a Bulldog. And you're actually signing a books tonight. Tonight. Barnes & Noble on the Upper East Side. Upper I think, West Side, Upper I West Side. Yes. 82nd Street or something? Yes. Yeah, West Side. You up there? I'm going to be At there. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock till 9 o'clock. Please come down, and I'd love to meet you and sign the book. Anson Williams, real pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.